Hey guys, VG Logic here, and today we're going to be having a little look at Tommy Mackin and Rally on the PlayStation. This game was made by Europress. Now I can't honestly say I've heard of them before, but it came out in July 1998 to a less than stellar reception if I remember correctly. Curiously, there's no Wikipedia page for this game, well certainly not one that I could find, so I could be completely wrong there. But it would be really easy just to compare this game to a certain other rally game that came out on the PlayStation around the same kind of time. But that's not really the purpose of this video. I think it's better to talk about this game based on its own merits, even if those merits are a little few and far between. The first thing that you'll notice in this game is that it has a bit of an identity crisis. It's like the developers had never actually watched Rally before. For those who don't know, in Rally all competitors are challenged to set their best times across courses in different parts of the world. Now these courses aren't circuits with laps, you start at one place and you finish in another. Also in Rally, the only time you'll ever find another opponent is if they've crashed or if they're in a ditch somewhere. So the goal really is to compete for the best time, and that's basically it. So that really begs the question, why in this game am I doing laps, and why do I have three opponents battling against me at the same time? Now honestly, I'm all for the last part, a good race is always fun, providing it's done well, but sadly it isn't done too well here. I'll be the first to admit that I'm not fantastic at racing games. I may even generally be bad at racing games, but I can't say the level of failure I've had in this game falls entirely on me. I really struggled with Tommy Mackin and Rally, so I turned the difficulty down. What I'm playing right now is the easiest settings available, and for the life of me, I just can't keep up. The AI takes no prisoners. You have to keep your foot on the accelerator more or less the entire race. The problem with that is that if you clip any scenery, the chances are you're going to flip your car over. It's really unsatisfying actually, the car just flips onto its side and slides across the floor for a few metres before just putting you back on your wheels to start again. I'm not saying I wanted Destruction Derby 2 levels of carnage, but something a bit more than what's shown here would have been nice. If you contact with the scenery, it either flips you or sometimes it'll just spin you to face the other way around, but honestly if either of these things happen you've basically lost the race, there's very little that you can do to recover. After about 4 hours of playing I was beginning to grasp the controls a little better, but I never fully got used to how finicky the steering was. With any car, regardless what you pick, there always seems to be a little bit too much oversteer, so you have to feather the sort of left and right buttons over and over again just to keep the car going straight. Also, for a rally game, it seems a bit odd that the terrain doesn't seem to make too much difference to how things feel. Tarmac seems to have about as much grip as sort of sand or wet mud, and all of those seem to have as much grip as driving on ice the entire time. With how fast your opponents are, you're forced to take risks throughout the entirety of each race, but the outcome for me at least always seems to be the same. Hit some scenery, the car flips, lose a race. Or hit some scenery and the car just spin over and over and you lose the race anyway. Um, inevitably, either of those scenarios I just lost. That's basically my experience with this game, just getting my butt handed to me over and over. Um, providing you can adapt to the steering though, I guess you might have a bit of fun with this title, even if I didn't. There's a couple of modes to pick from, there's arcade and championship mode, like you'd expect from most racing games. And you've got time attack, which is honestly the closest you're going to get to an actual rally, and there's a 1v1 mode against an AI version of Tommy Mackinnon, which is actually pretty fun, it's probably my favourite mode, and there's a track editor as well. As for that track editor, it's just okay, there's options to change the scenery with a few presets, and no matter what course you make, it will always let you play it in laps, even if the course doesn't actually join up. In most cases it probably won't join up anyway, they don't let you put very many segments of track down, it's probably a limitation of the console at the time. It's nice to see some effort though, even if my masterpiece wouldn't join up like I wanted to. The graphics as you've seen aren't too shabby, that flickering you might have noticed was actually a dodgy cable when I was recording so the game doesn't actually do that. Um, but the visuals are good enough, uh, good enough to tell you what's going on anyway, but there are far better looking games out there. Where this game does do some peculiar things though is with the sound. I actually like quite a lot of the music, uh, it's a bit different, a bit dancey, um, but it's a shame I didn't name the tracks. In the sound menu you have a choice from such musical wonders as track 1, track 2 and track 11, or random if you really want. There's also no way to listen to these tracks in the options menu, so if there was one bit of music you liked and you wanted to race to, you just have to pick at random and hope it's the one you actually liked. 
bit of an oversight really, but worst of all is the volume then and how it changes throughout the game. Uh, the main menu has got decent enough music I guess, but it's so loud. It's louder than anything you're actually going to hear during your races. So sadly you have to pick between not being able to hear the music mid-race, or you'll have to deal with just rushing to turn the volume down in between races each time. It's just weird and like more than a few things in this game, it just feels rushed, it just feels like it wasn't tested properly. There is some fun to be had here maybe, but I think it all boils down to if you actually wanted to play a rally game in the first place, and if you can get used to the way things control. It's hard to shake the feeling that the developers saw Colin McRae rally on the horizon and thought they could get in on the whole rally action thing going on. You can see how that went. I mean, Colin McRae went on to become Colin McRae Dirt and then just Dirt Rally after Colin McRae passed away. And they're still making this uh, this series as well, I mean, unless it's 18 years later. Tommy Mackin and Rally never really got a sequel and maybe that was for the best. And I think that more or less wraps it up for this game anyway, so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.